Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Plugged In from YAA Electric. My name is Justin Fisher. Justice, how are you doing today? Thank you for being here. I am doing well today. How are you? Wonderful. Excited to talk about money and legislation and jargon. Yes, we're going to be getting deep into the text of the EV tax credits today. The newest proposal, which is not a done deal. That'll be number one that we hit on. It's not a done deal. But Justice and I have done some deep digging to try to find out the answers to many of the questions you guys have sent us about what is and is not included in the proposed revisions to the tax credit. So good morning, everyone. Good morning, James. I saw your question. We're going to address it here in a minute. Good morning, Kenny. Happy Hippo. Lovely to see you. Hello, John, Dwayne, Sean. A lot of people here today. So early in the morning um, on Pacific time over here on the East Coast, it's 11 a.m. It's practically afternoon. So, yeah, um, if you're if you've been living under an EV rock, you might not know that last week, um, two senators from the United States Senate surprised the world, the EV world, the automotive world, by introducing a proposal for that goes beyond just EV tax credit revisions. It goes into different sectors of the clean energy economy, um, innovation, healthcare, etc. But what we're going to be talking about today is what could be included with the EV tax credit revisions. Now, I'm going to start there could be included because we're still waiting on Senator Kirsten Cinema from Arizona to chime in and say if she will support it. What most likely will happen is there's probably going to be some revisions to the whole, whole bill. We're still a few weeks away from finding out if this will indeed become law. But for, for today, let's pretend like it's going to happen. Wouldn't that be a nicer way to start the day, Justice? Yeah, yeah. I like to live in fantasy land a little bit. Yeah, and... Uh... I wish I was uh, Senator Cinema though. Uh, she's yeah. got to be getting a lot of nice gifts right now. Yeah, lots of nice gifts because, as we're going to talk about, there are some pr surprising omissions, omissions from this proposed text. A lot of EVs that people love, myself included, would not be included if this revision indeed becomes law. So, uh, yeah, we're going to dive into it. Let's start there. Is it a done deal? Short answer: No. OK, it's going to take a few more weeks to find out if they're going to push this through in this legislative session. So the good news is we're not going to be waiting months and months or even a year like we had been with the previous proposal in the Build Back Better plan. We waited forever only to find out that it was dead. They're on a timeline because of this session ending sometime at the end of August or maybe even in September. So we'll, we'll find out soon enough. But you guys, I've got some bad news. OK, Justice, let's let's start out with the bad news and maybe we'll finish with the good news. Let's talk yeah. about all of the EVs, the very popular high selling EVs that are not included in the revised text because of the vehicle being too expensive, which I mean, you can make some arguments for and against that. Or and what most commonly is the issue with a lot of America's popular EVs is where they are manufactured. Uh, many of them are not made in the U.S., and that would eliminate them from the tax credit. So, Justice, let's start with you. Which which EVs were you most surprised or disheartened to see were eliminated from the tax credit with this proposal? Well, obviously, we all know I'm going to go with the Tesla. Yes. Uh, you know, we all got excited that the cap was removed, but then you start looking into it, and even the Model 3's batteries, are made primarily out of China. So it sounds like even the Model 3s won't qualify. You got the Model Y, so that's good. I mean, those are made, uh, the batteries are mined out of Nevada and North America, so, and some out of Australia, but I'll still qualify. But basically in Tesla, you only have the Model Y that qualifies. Nothing else in Tesla qualifies. So that yes. was disheartening. And then that the... Subaru would be the other one. Yes. Yeah. And I'm going to get further into the list because honestly, we dug up like a dozen EVs that would not qualify. But perhaps before we go any further, we should uh, tell the viewers what would change, at least the high level summary of what would change with the proposed tax credit. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. 
you guys might be a little bit disappointed uh or, or or you might be thrilled if you're trying to buy a model y which i was i was considering a model y myself and i might have waited it out if it still costed what it cost like a year ago you know like say fifty six thousand dollars and it was going to get this tax credit i wouldn't have gotten an ionic 5 i would have gotten a model y so yeah let's uh share my screen for a second and show you guys the high level summary of this proposal okay so how is it different than what we currently have today there's a seven thousand five hundred dollar non-refundable tax credit for EVs built by automakers until they reach a 200,000 sale cap. For that reason, today, in the existing tax credit that's been around for 12 years, Tesla EVs and General Motors EVs are no longer qualifying for the tax credit. Toyota is in the phase-out period, and Ford is up next to phase-out on the current tax credit. The revisions would bring it back for everyone by removing the sale cap. Instead, they would enact a time limit or I guess an expiration date of uh, 2032 for the tax credits that we're going to talk about today. So instead of a tax uh, sale cap, it's got an expiration date of 2032. The credit would remain at 7,500. However, it would become income limited. Individual filers would need an adjusted gross income of $150,000 or less, and joint filers, $300,000 or less. A uh, head of household is 225. It can become a rebate. Now, this is a question we've had Is okay. this a rebate or a tax credit? Now, we dug into the text, and here's what we found. In Forbes, the uh, analysts over at Forbes agree with this. It is a rebate if you exercise your option under the new revision to claim the credit at the point of sale at the dealership. Then you can get the full 7500 If you don't exercise that option, then it's a non-refundable tax credit just like the current one. Justice, does that align with what you saw? Yeah, yeah. That's what I, I always dig, dug into that a lot just because, you know, that was being at the point of sale but still having the income limits was a bit confusing. Yeah. So we're going to into that. By the way, if you want to learn more, we're over here at joinyaa.com at our EV tax credit guide, which we update regularly. There's plenty of updates to go around these days. This is what disqualifies a large number of EVs that people are interested in today. In order to get the full credit, the EV needs to be assembled in North America uh, why not just the U.S.? Because it also includes free trade agreement countries, which I, we looked at the list. There's 20 countries. Mexico and Canada are also included. Um, the majority of battery components need to come from North America. And it must contain a certain percentage of minerals from countries with free trade agreements with the U.S. So, for example, the Mustang Mach-E, which is currently built in Mexico, is still going to be included because of that free trade agreement. Another few things to talk about with this proposal. This one's big. Used EVs would now be eligible for a $4,000 federal tax credit. However, there's an interesting cap in there. It cannot cost more than $25,000. Today, Justice, what, what EVs could you buy used for $25,000 or less? Like a 2015 Nissan Leaf? Yeah, I was going to say a, a five, six-year-old Leaf. Uh, maybe a Bolt here and there, uh, but not much for that. And you can only use that once. Yes. So. The used EV tax credit can only be used once per vehicle. So if you're going to be the third owner of a Nissan Leaf in like 2024, you're probably not going to be able to qualify that, uh, not be able to claim that $4,000 tax credit for used EVs. And then there's the price limits, which have got a lot of people uh, upset, especially Rivian. Rivian would yeah. no longer qualify. Rivian is very upset. They're very upset. Yes. And um, I don't look at EV stocks on the day to day, but I bet it's taking a hit with this proposal. I don't know. Um, so vans, SUVs and trucks, which includes Rivian R1T, Ford F-150 Lightning. I guess you could say the Hummer EV. They have to have an MSRP or I guess an actual out the door price of under $80,000 to qualify. Um, electric sedans up to $55,000. So this means that the Model X from Tesla, the Model S, um, the Rivians we just talked about, neither of them would qualify. Marked up, 
Yeah, the, oh, of course, the Lucid Air. Uh, the F-150 Lightning with the markups that we're seeing. And even if you're just going for the Platinum or some of the Lariat trims of the F-150 Lightning, it would not qualify because you're getting up over $80,000 with a fully loaded F-150 Lightning. Yeah, a lot of EVs don't qualify because of this right here. Justice, what would you think a better, more fair upper limit would be for the pricing? Uh, you know, just in the prices right now, I'd like I would honestly prefer if we're talking about making EV adoption real, which I have an idea it, too, so I'm going to compare what you say to what I think. I'm just saying to make it real because I know the when I say it people are going to be like, "Oh, you're you know, you want to advantage the rich who can afford the stuff. No, no. I want to get the things switched over, and those who are buying them now are paying substantially more. So I would say for a sedan, I would like to see the $80,000 cap, and then maybe like one twenty for the uh, for the trucks and SUVs. I think it's, it's a more realistic number on the inflated prices that we're seeing right now with raw material. Now, I was digging through some pricing for various EV models and what I came up with, which what, you know, if they were to consult me, YAA's EV expert about what their price limits should be for the revised tax credit, I would say sedans at 60,000, SUVs, trucks and vans at 100,000. Um, that's just where I came came down, but I don't know. It's it's very interesting. Let's talk more about the uh, specific questions you guys have sent. All right. Which ones don't qualify? I heard that from quite a few people. I uh, had some people email me looking to see which EVs would not qualify. And it's a depressingly long list. So here we go. I'm just going to list out all the EVs that I found that would not qualify, mostly because of where they're built. Some of them because of the price tag. Rivian R1T. Rivian R1S. Lucid Air. The Hummer EV. Tesla Model X, Tesla Model S. Those are all because of pricing. Okay. And then when you start to get into based on where they're built, here's the list. Hyundai Ionic 5. My own beloved Hyundai Ionic 5 would not qualify until Hyundai opens up their EV production plant in Georgia, which is not expected to happen until 2025. That means the Ionic 5 would suffer tremendously in sales when it for, for a few years until they can hurry up and get that plant open just because it's not built in the U.S. yet. The Kia EV6, the Nero, the Kona, the new Ionic 6, unless it is indeed built in America. Polestar. The Polestar 3 will be built in America, but right now the Polestar 2, a popular electric sedan, is not. Volvo C40, XC40. Toyota BZ4X. I trash on the BZ4X quite a bit. And um, honestly, it needs all the help it can get uh, because of slow charging. Somewhat okay range. And if it's not going to qualify for the tax credit, it might be a death knell for the success of the BZ4X. And its partner, the Subaru Solterra, built on the same platform. The Nissan Aria would not qualify. And then if you can afford a Porsche... The, the the Taycan would not qualify either. Justice, did you see any others? Uh, I don't think uh, what the new Land Rover, but that, I think that's about it. Oh, and I've got another one. Lindy here in the chat. Excellent question. Bad news for you. Fisker Ocean oh, would not yeah, qualify. Not. It would not. And I'm a big proponent of the Fisker Ocean. I love this EV. Um, I think it's going to be quite successful, but if it's not qualifying for the tax credit, it would not be as successful. Now, why wouldn't it qualify? It's because Magna, a very reputable manufacturer in Europe, will be building the Fisker Ocean for Fisker. The fact that Magna is building the Ocean, that's good news. They build vehicles for Mercedes, BMW, Land Rover, Jaguar, a few others. But because it's in Europe, it would disqualify the Fisker Ocean. So and, and a company as small as Fisker, you know, they're just getting started. Let's face it, Justice, they can't afford to just throw together a U.S. factory in a few years. Not yet. They're, they're not there yet. So this would be really tragic for Fisker. Um, yeah, yeah, they'll have to move over to Foxconn or something that's building there. Yeah. Yeah, we can't forget Foxconn just built, uh, bought Lordstown's former factory in Ohio 
Foxconn makes a lot of iPhones. Now they're going to start making a lot of electric vehicles. Maybe Fisker can get in on that. Foxconn is building the Fisker Pair, which is Fisker's electric sedan, but that is still at least a few years away. So, Justice, what's your take on the long list of EVs we just went through that do not qualify? Um, I think the manufacturers are either going to sort of catch up there or they're going to sort of write off the U.S. EV market. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how that all plays out or if they're going to do more partnerships. I see a lot of partnerships in the EV space that we haven't seen before. So I think that could be a way forward, too. It's I know there's a lot of pushback from Rivians and other manufacturers right now on this. This brings to mind the 2024 Honda Prologue. So it's a Honda. It's an EV. Honda's first EV in the American market. The Honda Prologue actually would qualify because it's going to be built by General Motors. Wow, that's just amazing, right? Can't believe. Let me say that again. The Honda Prologue first EV coming to America from Honda will be built by General Motors in America. So it would qualify. That's an example of what you're saying, Justice. There's just yeah. like so many nuances and partnerships that have been forged so that automakers can try to somehow catch up to Tesla, I guess. Yeah, and you know, and then so a lot of these too, the batteries start coming into play, even if they're built here, like we said with the Model Three. Like, okay, but if the battery is coming from China, it doesn't matter if it's built here because you're still not qualifying. So, you know, there's a lot of shifting in the industry. I know GM is one of the ones out there saying uh, these rules are too much too fast. They want to sort of tear down how fast this stuff has to happen in order to remain viable. Yes, yes, indeed. Um, now we got a good comment worth bringing up from Igor in the chat. Part of this tax pr proposal is cars that come from countries that are in free trade agreements with the U.S. Now, Justice, I know you looked this up last time. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again. It's surprising which countries we do have a free trade agreement with and how many we don't. So let me yeah, go ahead that and was, share this with everyone. Which the before I, list is surprising to me. Yes. And before I go into this briefly, if you've got questions, if you're just joining us now, we're talking about which EVs do and do not qualify for the federal EV tax credit revisions that are proposed. Not a done deal. Drop us a comment in the chat and we'll get back to the EV that you are considering shopping for. Even if we already talked about it, we'll loop back. Um, so, yeah, check this out, you guys. These are the countries that we do have a free trade agreement with. It's 20 countries, Australia, Canada. I'm, I'm going to point out the ones that are um, kind of like big automotive makers, I guess. All big automakers. Canada. OK, no surprise. Mexico. That's where the Mustang Mach-E is built. Um, that's really it when it comes to car production. Korea. OK, so maybe the Ionic 5 would qualify. Is this what you were talking about, Igor? Korea. I'm guessing they mean South Korea. Um, yeah, that's news to me. Yeah, I mean, but the battery component part of that is still there, right? Because do the battery components, they're not. <sighs> you brought me, you brought me right? back down to earth. You brought yeah. me back down to earth because I was, I was just wondering, well, then why have I seen so many people freaking out about the Ionic 5 and EV6 losing on losing the tax credit and you're right sorry justice you ruined the day for for all of us you're right uh right. <laughs> it's because of the battery sourcing too so um let me get into those details real quick uh the caveats and the details in this proposal for this we're going to hop over to electric they did a great compilation of the fine print in this revised tax credit all right, not going to go over all of them. There are so many. But the vehicle must be assembled in North America to qualify for the credit. Okay, okay, okay. The 7,500 credit is now broken into two pieces. Half of it is based on the vehicle having at least 40% of its battery critical minerals from the United States or countries with a free trade agreement with the United States. Oh. Okay, so we'd have to look into that, Justice. Yeah. The other half is based on at least 50% of the battery components 
coming from the U.S. So it's the minerals that go into battery manufacturing, lithium, cobalt, et cetera. Uh, you know, cobalt is hopefully on its way out, but that's another topic. Um, and then also the battery manufacturing itself. Where is that happening? <sighs> Does this change our conclusion for the Ionic 5 and EV6? I don't think so. I don't think so either. I mean, may have, they might qualify for half the rebate then, it sounds like. Possibly. Yeah. So as you can see, Justice and I spent a lot of time digging deep into the proposed tax credit, and we still did not find answers for everything. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, for example, the full text isn't out yet. This isn't a done deal yet. So, yes. you know, there's definitely going to be some um, looking at that final bill and the wording there. Yeah. Um, so the EV6, we had a question in the chat from James. Would the EV6 qualify as of now? No. But it, I mean, automakers are lobbying with everything they've got to try to get this text revised to include their EVs. Uh, they've spent billions of dollars, actually half a trillion overall among all automakers on EV uh, research and development. And they're definitely wanting to uh, get some kind of reward for all of that investment. And they're hoping for the tax credit. I know Rivian is really upset. I mean, who knows how Tesla handles this because they don't even have like a PR department. But uh, the Model Y would qualify. That's the best selling EV in America right now. Yeah. Well, and the good news for them is um, they only have to lobby one person now. So it's yeah. easier. They can concentrate yeah. on just the one person. So if you're interested in a specific EV and you happen to live in Arizona, you can uh, contact your senator and say, pretty please, uh, <laughs> because Arizona Senator uh, Kirsten Cinema is the one who currently has the most power over the sway of this legislation. Yeah, uh, let's get into some more questions we've had from viewers and listeners. I had a good one from Kirk Martin, an email sent to me. Wanted to know if you purchase a vehicle or sorry, if you get a purchase agreement to buy a car in 2022 but don't receive it until 2023 would you be eligible for the 2022 tax credit you could claim the original 2022 tax credit like what we have now if that basically makes you eligible to claim the credit so here's what i mean okay here's what i mean if you get a purchase agreement to buy in 2022 for a toyota bz4x let's just say you love the toyota bz4x um but it would lose the tax credit under the revised uh, proposal. You could get a purchase agreement this year and still claim the tax credit when you file taxes in early 2023. You could do that. Or if so, there, there are some um, exceptions within the text. It caused them. Oh, what's What do they call it? Transition provision. That's what they call it. The transition provision. But if your situation is different and say you want a Tesla Model Y and right now under the current uh, current tax credit, it does not qualify because of the 200,000 sale cap. You could get a signed purchase agreement in 2022, take delivery in, I don't know, February 2023, and you could claim the new revised tax credit because of the transition provision. Is that how you understood the text, Justice? That's how I understood it from reading throughout yeah yeah it, it sort of gets uh reading the analysis confuses uh me versus reading the text it's yeah like, the the I've text by some the, of the way, analysis that said the exact opposite i'm like that's that's not how i read i read it the same way you did yeah that's that's why i dug into the text because uh yeah it's the whole bill is 725 pages i did not read that the ev portion was i don't know like 50 pages maybe closer to 100 pages uh, and it's really large font, so it's not like reading a book. So I scrolled through that. And yeah, from what we found, you could honestly make it work for your situation if this does indeed get passed into law, depending on the EV that you're looking for. So you could claim the old tax credit if you get a purchase agreement in 2022, or you could claim the new tax credit if it's an EV that was not currently covered under the existing law. So that's a good uh, transition provision. Yeah, as long as it's built January 1st or later. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Other questions from the viewers? Hmm. 
Yeah, we had some questions on Fisker and Rivian. No, nope, neither of those would qualify. Rivian, it's the price limits. Fisker, it's based on where it is produced. Justice, what are your thoughts? My thoughts are still the same thing I thought when I looked at the free trade agreements. Japan's not a country that we have free trade agreements with, really. Uh, yeah, surprising, huh? Uh, that's my number one that I keep going back to. I'm like, really, Japan's not someone we do free trade with. That's just crazy to me. Um, yes. We have not had a bad relationship with them since, well, it's 1940. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. So it was really surprising. Yeah, I saw a recent survey of uh, what people around the world think about the United States, and Japan actually thought very highly of the United States, according to yeah. the respondents of the survey. Uh, they're Reginald, one of our biggest fans. Yeah, we're we're they're, we're allies. That's the yeah appropriate term. We're allies. Um, I know Reginald, if you're still with us, this comment was from quite a while ago, but we were mentioning the vehicles that do not qualify if the bill passes. Uh, some of them do qualify now. Teslas do not. General Motors do not. Uh, but Justice, let's talk about some popular EVs that would qualify under the revised tax credit that currently do not. Now, I'll start off. Tesla Model Y. Tesla Model Y would qualify under the revisions. It currently does not. Uh, that is the highest selling electric vehicle in America. What's another one, Justice? Another one that would qualify. Chevy Bolt? Yeah, Chevy Bolt. Um, the Hummer EV would gonna, not. Chevy Bolt's going to be a big one with the price reduction. And this tax credit is probably going to be the most affordable EV out there by a long shot. Yeah. And we, we can't forget that over at GM, I'm sure their engineers and marketing teams, they're not even really thinking about the Bolt very much right now. They're thinking about the upcoming Equinox EV, which I'm excited for. It's on my list of most anticipated EVs next year. It's supposed to start around 35000 for the versions that people would be most interested in. Uh, that's basically affordable. That would now qualify for the tax credit with these revisions. It currently would not with the existing system because of the sales cap that GM has already hit. The Blazer EV. I don't think any of them go above $80,000. So it looks like all of the Blazers would qualify. And that's another EV to look forward to. The Lyric from Cadillac would qualify. I'm a big fan of the Lyric. I'd love to test drive one. Let's see. I thought the Lyric was higher price. I gotta look at it. it starts at about 60 and it's an SUV. Okay. I believe some trims do go over 80, but uh, yeah, it starts around 60. Let's see. Any other questions in the chat? So if I, if I understand this correctly, if the bill comes out and becomes active in 2023, if you buy a car this year, you have the current tax. And if the car is delivered in 2023, you could pick either yes this is correct so based on the transition provision in the current text which the text could be changed it has not been passed you can basically pick and choose to suit your situation if you're in this kind of buying predic predicament if you sign a purchase agreement but take delivery in early 2023 you could claim the old tax credit that we currently have if it's best for your situation for example the I don't know, the um, Volvo XC40, because it would not qualify in the new one because it's built in Europe. Um, however, if you're looking at a Tesla Model Y and currently would not be able to qualify for the tax credit, you could take advantage of the new credit in early 2023, even if you have a signed purchase order from late 2022 because of the transition provision. Yeah. Now, again, uh, so long as it's built after January. If it's yes. built in the end of December, it won't qualify. Oh man! Even if you take it, if you take delivery of it in January, well, the the VIN number. The VIN be. number has the production in it. Damn. Yeah, okay. Okay. So it has to be built January first or late. A uh, happy hippo in the chat wondering about the Lexus RZ, which is upcoming. It would not qualify because of where it is built. Yep. Uh, the base Silverado EV, and 
Ford F-150 Lightning would qualify if there are not outrageous dealer markups. So here's another aspect that uh, we haven't even talked about, Justice, which is that these revised tax credit proposals could indeed put pressure on automakers to tone down their allowance of dealer markups because they would be pricing themselves out of the tax credit in many cases. Yeah, I can also see with it being at point of sale, uh, I could see dealers splitting that. Ah, yes. I mean, you, you just know that's going to happen. The dealer's going to say, hey, we're selling 3500 below MSRP. And what they're really doing is just taking $3,500 of the tax credit for themselves. Yeah, knowledge is power, everyone. Free. Yeah, so, I if, mean, that's, we know that's going to happen. If you don't, yeah, if you don't know what you're doing when you approach your uh, dealer who's selling you the EV, they might take advantage of you. So knowledge is power and definitely got to uh, stay on top of whatever ends up being signed into law. So we're going to get close to wrapping up this show. Uh, let's see. Got a good comment from Mark. Did we compile each st state's EV infrastructure roadmap on YAA? Yes, we did, Mark. I'll drop that into the comments on this video as well. We have just published a resource consolidating every state's plan for how they're going to spend federal funding to build out their portion of the national charging network. And it is fascinating. So $5 billion with an extra one and a half billion, I'm sorry, two and a half billion uh, possible after that distributed to the state starting in 2023. Contract bids are going out in just like six months time. States are getting the ball rolling for their charging networks. Now, are they going to do it right? That's where I'm a bit skeptical, but I'm hopeful that they will. If you want to learn how your state is preparing to build out charging infrastructure along interstates and other alternative fuel corridors, check out the article. I'll drop a link in the chat and in our comments section. So, Oh, man, so much going on, Justice. You... Yeah. I spent most of my free time yesterday reading through California's proposal. Uh, so thank you very much for that article. It took a long time to get through and understand everything. And then, you know, the frustration that I always have, which is we have the most chargers already. And we're also taking the lion's share of that money. Yeah. It's definitely interesting to think about. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll wrap up the show by saying this is not a done deal. Stay on top of the latest updates, which we, of course, will be bringing you here at YAA Electric. Uh, if you check us out on Instagram, YAA Electric, I'll be posting updates on there as well as in our EV tax credit guide. I'll link to both of these in the comments section. And if you're checking us out on the podcast, Thank you for being here. Check out joinyaa.com. Over on the community forum, we even have an entire electric vehicle forum that has thousands of active members. It's a really exciting place to be. Yeah, Justice, we'll see what happens. I'm going to be staying on top of this, but I'm going to remain skeptical. I believe changes are incoming. Hopefully, they're changes in the right direction, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm really hopeful that, you know, we get a little bit of adjustments here and and this is good for all consumers who want to make that switch over. Yes. All right, everyone. Have a wonderful Wednesday. We'll be seeing you Friday. Yeah, take care. Send us your questions. I'm Justin at joinyaa.com. Justice at joinyaa.com. Join We'll see you guys in a few days. Ciao.